Okay, so Mr. West here, I've got the source comparison from the 2016 uh, AS exam. Look at the two extracts and a bit of advice on how to answer this question and a bit of a plan on how to do it. Let's have a look. So as always with these, we've got the uh, the key targets that we're looking at um, for each of those. And these colours will be on your work. So have a look at those and then um, see what they are here. The key ones um, tend to be about the fact that you need to have two separate answers. Each uh, answer has an intro and a conclusion, and they are separate. Uh, even though it's called a comparison, <laughs> the purple target there is the key one. All right, so let's have a look. So first up is the blue one. Begin each section by summing up the assertions that the author is trying to convince you of. Okay, so look at your intro, and you want to begin with something like the author of extract A is trying to convince the reader that, and briefly sum up what it is that they're trying to say. Now, of course, this is really tricky at the start because you maybe just read it, you want to get going, it's it's not easy. And that's the real challenge. So my little tip there for you uh, at the bottom here might be worth just leaving a couple of lines, okay? Because as you then go in and develop your answer, you're like, oh, actually, they are, they're trying to convince me. For example, extract B is trying to convince you about social Darwinism. I may not pick that up at first glance. You can add it in. This should be brief, okay? Um, and it shouldn't be particularly detailed, but each section needs a separate introduction explaining what they're trying to uh, convince you of. And as I say, that is tricky, so always leave a line or two and then you can add to it. By all means, use a sentence starter or use your own. I don't mind, but get that gist across. Secondly, it's always one that we bang on about. Remember, I always say your answer should be riddled with convincing. So go through it and highlight where you've used the word convincing or a derivative of it, okay? Um, and by all means, use a, you know different sentences to build this in, but keep using the word convincing, okay? So um, the assertion's too general to be entirely convincing. That's a nice example, isn't it, okay? Um, uh, or the... Um, extract uses evidence to back up its assertion which makes it convincing further to that i also know that and this makes it more convincing or not convincing okay so try and use the word throughout if you've got that tight go through and highlight it and then improve it to include it more and more okay so now we're on to the kind of meat of this really and here we have extract a and what i've done is produce a detailed plan of how to answer this question i've picked three sections of it and you can see those are color coded from the answer and then i've used the mark scheme my own knowledge the textbook to try and build up a picture of how you might answer that so if we start off with the the navy one okay now the textbook well, first of all, the leading theorists of expansion may, may argue that sea power is the foundation of national greatness. The green bits from the Mark scheme, there was a significant development of the US Navy in these years, leading it to becoming the third largest sea power by 1940, having been the 10 largest in the mid 19th century. So you can see there's increase there. However, I, I, I would worry that that's perhaps a bit too narrow a focus. What about preclusive, progressive, the need for markets a little bit? I think it's a little bit too narrow to be entirely convincing, although the Mark scheme obviously backs that up. And that's not a stat I know, so certainly by all means get that written down and get it into your notes as well. So that's the first part. Then it moves on to talk about um, the... Uh, this That meant that not only the rebuilding of the merchant marine and of the powerful navy to protect it, but also the acquisition of naval bases and co overseas colonies, especially in the Caribbean and the Pacific. Um, and I think how I look at it is I think when I see Pacific, I think, right, okay, Hawaii is a pretty good example. If you get in your textbook, look at the how the history of America taking over Hawaii, and you can see it does make that viewpoint. It was initially taken over as a naval base and training port before being occupied in 1898, okay? So the initial takeover is a bit before the period. But then in the period it is occupied, and I feel that fits really, really well. However, I find the mention of the Caribbean less than totally convincing. There's been much debate from historians over the motives of the Spanish-American War. The US ship Maine was certainly destroyed, but the motive for involvement was wider than just the Navy. And the extract's too narrow to focus solely on it. Cuban independence and the role of the media, the yellow press, was also important. So again, have a little bit of a look at that. I think, just to sum it up, that I'm quite happy, where are we, with the mention of Pacific, because I think Hawaii fits nicely, but I'm less happy about the mention of the word Caribbean. I'm not as convinced by, 
bear that there, okay? And then, and this is a bit of a curveball, and I'll be very impressed if you've looked at the uh, at the orange bit at the bottom here, because there's a bit in the mark scheme about TR, Theodore Roosevelt. Um, and the claim related to the ambitions of Roosevelt does have validity. E.g. was directly involved in the Spanish-American War and the Roosevelt Corollary in 1904. So that's from the mark scheme, and it says that. Theodore Roosevelt does have validity, okay, so it's convincing. However, I, I'm not sure that the Roosevelt corollary was based around the need for overseas markets and mercantilism, but more around progressive imperialism. The idea, if I said to you, what is the Roosevelt corollary, you, I would probably say, oh, it's about setting a police force in Latin America. Well, does that really fit with... Uh, the role of the uh, Navy that's portrayed in this, okay? And then this bit here at the bottom, for your conclusion, is, um, yeah, is what they've suggested could be a conclusion. You don't have to have this, but if you're struggling for one, you could use it. Uh, conclude the extract here has a relatively narrow focus, but the development of the US Navy and acquisition of colonies offers support to the argument. So that could be an answer that you could put together. So have a look through this, think to yourself, right, where have I used, remember I've got my three bits uh, of the extract and I've engaged with both positive and negative, all right? So have a look at that and try and improve your answer based around that. Okay, so now we move on to extract B, okay? Um, and yeah, there's a few extra bits I've picked out of this. So again, and what I've done is I've used the mark scheme. So the bits that the mark scheme, the examiner has picked out, they're the bits I've picked out and I've engaged with them. Not always with the examiner uh, in agreement, but on that basis, okay? So, um, yeah, so the this navy bit, I've picked the, uh, um, the last part of that first paragraph, which basically says that um, the isolation of American diplomacy began to react to these forces, okay? Uh, scientific development, communication, uh, and um, the idea that it couldn't last, okay? Um, and I've looked from the mark scheme, and it's made the point that um, basically the uh, there's numerous examples from page 82 about industrial growth um, uh, and the period and the need for ever more markets for US products, the support in the argument. That's on page 82 in the textbook. So you can have a look through, pick out something about the oil production, steel production, and use that, definitely. That said, you could easily make the argument that the American economy would have absorbed these huge increases anyway because the economy itself is increasing at such a rate um, uh, uh, that it maybe could have you know didn't need the overseas markets in the same way as the uh, as has been suggested let's move on to that because that first bit is a little bit tricky and of the three i think i'm less convinced than my answer there let's move on to the the purple bit then which talks about uh, it was the sheer strength of industrial America and its desire for new markets. So if you look at the historiography, we know, don't we, the need for markets is a popular school of thought amongst historians. So uh, let me have a look in the textbook here. Uh, yeah, so it's on page 89 that uh, talks about, and they, you know, Niall Ferguson's talked about the um, impact of the 1893 Depression. Also, we've had William A. Williams, the best name ever, uh, William A. Williams, uh, talking about the open door policy with China. Uh, and we can clearly see, if you look up the China, it's uh, part of the book, okay, which is on, uh, where are we, a bit further on, out we further at China, just one second, uh, which is on page 97. You can definitely use that. And what about the Panama Canal as well? Um, that's not on the mark scheme, but you could see that that's needed for the need for markets and i also looked at the opposition to the philippines as well there's an interesting one that on page 92 because actually you look at the reason for the opposition is that actually america wouldn't gain anything from having the philippines um and lack of economic motives really only one percent of all u.s exports went to the philippines in 1897 so you can see actually opposition to american taking over that part was based around the need for markets or the lack of markets, perceived markets in the Philippines. So again, you can mention that. Right, and then you get this bit about social Darwinism, okay? Um, and I've taken a bit here from the uh, uh, the Marx scheme. Initially, when I saw that, I thought I'm not convinced really about uh, the um, about this. But it says, um, this is from the Marx scheme. This is the case that some abroad looked to the USA to take on what Kipling referred to as a white man's burden. Which is a poem directly addressed to the USA, and uh, and it does link a little bit to the progressive uh, imperialism school of thought, the idea of, of making uh, other countries better in inverted commas, or what we could say is more like America, um, and yeah, there's something there, but I do feel it probably overstates it to be totally convincing. Uh, I'm not sure Roosevelt 
was uh, simply bothered about social Darwinism. I think there's more to it than just that. Um, and again, you can have a look at that. Um, his motives for the, the kind of Roosevelt corollary in his actions. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, and again, the conclusion here from the Marx scheme offers a wide range of reasons, but perhaps overstates the extent to which isolation was abandoned and overstates the importance of some of these reasons. I, I feel the Industrial America section here is more, well, you can tell by the colour, more convincing than the social Darwinism uh, element. And perhaps that's what it's referring to in the kind of uh, official conclusion from the Marx scheme. But again, you don't need that specifically, but you must have a separate conclusion for each extract.